Good morning. Welcome, Santiago de Compostela Parish. We greet the people who are with us on live stream praying with us, and I invite you all to please stand. And since we're now all wearing name tags, this is our opportunity to greet each other by name, welcoming them today as we come together as one family in our parish community. We welcome with us also our guests, including our presider this morning, Father Ian, who is joining us, um, covering while Father Thomas and a group of our parishioners are doing their pilgrimage to the Holy Land. So I invite you now, as we begin our celebration, sing together with our wonderful choir, our gathering hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, for us to become worthy in the celebration of the Mass, let us call to mind our sins, and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. the sick Lord have mercy you forgive sinners Christ have mercy you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite forward our children to come forward for a blessing as they go to Children's Liturgy of the Word. Please come forward, children. As we pray together, um, today the gospel is going to tell you, Jesus is going to call you salt and light. So listen carefully. He's going to call you salt and light. Listen to what God means by calling you that. As we pray and we ask a special blessing as you open your ears to God's word in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. the oppressed and the homeless clothe the naked when you see them and do not turn your back on your own then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your wound shall quickly be healed your vindication shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The word of the Lord. Try. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. To Matthew, Glory to you, Lord, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city, a city set on a mountaintop cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and then, then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A 
the beginning of today's gospel, Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. And the, the big question here is, what do we mean by that? And how are we like salt? Because Jesus never explains this image. So therefore, that they're open for us to consider a variety of ways in which we are like salt. And you know, in the reflection of Father Smiga, he explained that salt is good when used in small amounts, at least in food. Have you ever tried to make a stew or a soup and measured poorly, putting in way too much salt? Of course, you can eat it. You have to throw it out. So, salt is to be used sparingly. How often do you read a recipe that asks for a pinch of salt? When we say a pinch, it is very small. But here is the point. It is still necessary. That is why the recipe calls for it. And without that pinch of salt, the food loses its flavor. So when Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth, he might be asking us to adopt the small gesture, the simple word, the gentle touch. When Jesus says that we are salt, he is telling us that sometimes following Him involves actions that are not very big at all. For instance, you are in the supermarket and down the aisle, you see a mother with two young children. And her shopping cart is full and the younger of the two children is in the seat of the cart screaming at the top of his lungs. And then the older child is on her feet, pulling on her mother's coat and crying because she has just been told that she cannot have one of the sugary drinks that she sees on the shelf. So the mother is caught between these two hysterical children trying to calm them down. And when the younger one takes a box of cereal from the cart and hurls it down the aisle. And then you walk over, pick up the cereal box, replace it in the cart, then in your most positive tone, you say to the mother, hang in there. She nods in appreciation and turns back to her children. They are still crying and she's still exhausted. But your simple word of solidarity has changed the flavor of the situation. You are sitting with your friends at school eating lunch and one of them begins to make fun of the girl in homeroom who always dresses poorly and stumbles over her words. And as your friend describes the girl, others around the table begin to laugh. And then you say, Cut it out. Let's talk about something else. You probably have not changed your friend's opinion of this girl, and they will probably mock her out at some future date. But today, your words have given this conversation a different seasoning. Your friend 
down the street has just been diagnosed with cancer. So, you walk over for a visit. She tells you about the diagnosis and about the upcoming treatment. There is nothing you can do and very little that you can say. So you ask, how about some coffee? And you know where she keeps it and you make a pot. And then you sit down at the kitchen table in silence with the coffee steaming between the two of you. Her cancer is, is still there. The treatments are yet to come. But your quiet presence has given her day a different taste. So, sisters and brothers, following Jesus certainly involves more than these small gestures. And that is probably why the image of salt in today's gospel is followed immediately by the image of light. Yes, sometimes we can do big things. Sometimes we can be a city on a mountain, a lamp on a lampstand, giving light to everything in the house. And our light can change people's lives. We can be instrumental in leading a depressed person to recovery, or leading an enemy to forgiveness, or a family to reconciliation. And when we have an opportunity to accomplish one of these big things, we should by all means, in Christ's name, let our light shine. But you know, these dramatic possibilities do not occur every day. And it is for this reason that today's gospel tells us that when we cannot be the light of the world, it is still service to be a pinch of salt. And may God bless us all. Even though Father Thomas is halfway around the world through the miracle of television, we get to hear him this morning as he invites us to reflect upon our um, commitment to the annual pastoral services appeal, our opportunity to put in practice what Father Ian just shared with us. So let's watch this video from Father Thomas. God be with us always. By the time you're watching this video, I am walking in a pilgrimage in the Holy Land with most of them our parishioners. And I assure you that at every turn and every day, we remember you in our masses and our prayers. Leviticus 19 verse 18 is the biblical verse that you will find in the PSA brochure from the diocese regarding the PSA appeal. And it is about the love of neighbor. And it is a familiar verse that tells us to love our neighbor as ourselves. In the diocesan brochure, if you open it, we are also told of the four major PSA participation will involve or will support. The four major areas are the support of retired priests, formation of the seminarians and ongoing education of our priests and deacons, Catholic charities serving more than 650 thousand families and individuals and assistance to over 17,000 Catholic school students. Our parish benefits from it as well. We have published a brochure in our parish regarding the PSA and this has the projects that have been completed through the PSA as well as projects that are ongoing and projects that we wish to accomplish for our parish family. These are made possible from the rebates that we have received. So I ask, do take time to pray and reflect 
on how generously you can participate in our 2023 PSA appeal. Let me share you a story about the man who while walking saw a paraplegic person who looked destitute and desperate. When he saw this person and also beside it a mother and a baby who is homeless and living on the streets, he tried helping but he only had a few money in his pocket to give to them. That night, in prayer, he questioned God why, seeing the situation of these people, God is not doing anything. Why does God leave these people up from their dire circumstances? There was silence, and then he heard a voice that said to him, I did something for these poor and destitute people. I created you. God created us to be instruments and manifestations of His love for everyone. We are challenged to walk on the path our Lord Jesus marked out for us, the way of compassionate and generous love. Inside the PSA mailing, you will also find the brochure entitled, Let Us Dream. Kindly take time to read and respond after praying to your choice of a vision statement for our parish family. Pope Francis, in our dynamic Catholic daily reflection said, prayer, humility, and charity towards all are essential in the Christian life. They are our way to holiness. May this help guide you in your choice and in your discernment of how much generously you are to participate in our PSA appeal as well as your response to Let Us Dream, a parish statement of vision for our parish family. So I'm humbly appealing and asking you to come together and fulfill our PSA assessment, which is 136,000 on our part to support our diocese. Thank you for your patience in watching and listening and responding positively to our 2023 PSA appeal. God bless, take care, and be safe. I love you all. Let us now stand. And let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God responds when we ask for what we need. Let us offer our petitions with confidence. For God's holy people, that we glorify God by living as the church teaches, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For young people, that they answer God's call to religious vocations and lay service in the church. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For those who are hungry, homeless, hungry, and unemployed, that they find shelter, food, and jobs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all here present who help the poor, the hungry, and the sick, that they find joy and renewal in their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the repose of the souls of Joseph Ramal Kaspelian, Kyle Estevar, and Andreas Bortieski, for whom we offer this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray in thanksgiving with the Gray family, the Six Smiths family, Koa fam, and Ila Abivia. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are sick, including baby Diego Cesar Robiamo, um, Andrew Murray, Barbara Yarchar, Charlene Shimoto, Drew Kaisentrik, Emma Escobar, Maga Varas, Maria Diaz, Isabel Garcia, Belin Tiado, ben Bridget Doe, and Mike Met Pant um, Ban Branton. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for those who have died for the repose of their souls, including Salvador Vaca, Milton Tennant, Miguel and Erlinda Alejo, Edwin Smith, Ma Profacion Cortez, and Jonah Magabanan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the needs each one of us uniquely bring to this Mass this morning that we now recall in silence. For all these needs and the needs we have placed already in our Ark of Prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father of kindness, you listen with special attention to those most in need. Open our ears and hearts that we may be instruments of your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord as we pray together the stewardship prayer. God, my Creator, you made me all that I am and gave me all that I have. Help me show my gratitude by using this gift to serve others in your name. Jesus, my Redeemer, you taught me the way to eternal life by your example of loving service to others. Grant me the courage to respond to your call to discipleship by following in your footsteps. Holy Spirit of God, be with me as I choose each day to put you first in my life. Let me be a model of Christian stewardship so others will come to know you through my actions. I pray, dear Lord, that you open the minds and hearts of all the men, women, and young people 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you lay the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Thomas and Timothy, his brother bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. solidarity with our sisters and brothers who are joining us via live stream, let us pray together an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a couple announcements. As Father Thomas mentioned earlier today, um, if you, um, for, our, for our parishioners who we have your address, we mailed you um, these brochures, three of them, and we encourage you to just look through them. If you didn't get a copy of the brochures, we have extras in the vestibules. Please pick them up. And as Father mentioned, a couple things we ask. One, for this brochure, if you would prayerfully consider an annual pledge that supports both the physical parish here, but also supports our church and the Diocese of Orange in the many different ministries that it does. So I ask you to consider to be as generous as you can and bring this back or, or sign up online. The second one that I encourage you to also look at is this called Let Us Dream. As we continue our process, we have our parish mission statement, but now we're gonna focus on our parish vision statement. And we ask you to prayerfully consider and make an election, a selection, so that we have your voices heard in the different choices that were put here by our parish leadership. Um, on this form, you have the option to either um, answer the one question um, and put this in the bullet, in the, excuse me, in the basket next week, or there's a QR code, and if you scan it, you have exactly one question to answer on the QR code. So if you're a techie, we encourage you to use the QR code, or you please bring it back next week. Even if you are a techie, and it's probably easier to drop it in the basket, if you remember it. That's always my challenge. On the pavilion, or excuse me, on the plaza this, after, this morning, our Boy Scouts have their bake sale. And I encourage you to stop by and pick up some very good goodies. I can tell you from personal experience, they're wonderful. Um, the, um, the, the volunteer tax, for, for low-income people who need help with their income taxes, our parish offers a service starting next weekend to help you file your taxes for, the, the, for, the, for low income. So if you're interested in that service, please check our bulletin for more information. This Saturday at 8 a.m. will be our monthly mass where we include the anointing of the sick and pray for those in, um, who are sick. And it happens this year to fall on, um, on the, um, our a World Sick Day that Pope um, John Paul II established 31 years ago. So we'll be celebrating that this Saturday. And afterwards, our Emmanuel ministry, our ministry to the sick, will be having their monthly um, meeting. So we encourage you to be part of that. And in two weeks, um, Father Thomas and Father Martin will be giving us all a gift called Messages of Healing for Lent. Lent? Oh yeah, that's a couple weeks away. So we encourage you as we begin our reflections and prepare for that time, be looking for that. And this being the um, first weekend of the month, we like to celebrate birthdays for the month of February. So if you're having a birthday any time in the month of February, we invite you to please come forward for a blessing. It's always that first person, am I going to be first, then everyone comes. <laughs> Please bow your head, and for the rest of us, we can extend our hands in prayer. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of these servants who recall the day of their birth and rejoice in your gifts of life and love, family and friends. Bless them with your presence and surround them with your love that they may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
bless you. Birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Damn. And to our Blessed Mother Mary, we all pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.